Okay, so in this video we want to introduce the normal distribution, the normal probability distribution. So the normal probability distribution is an example of a continuous distribution, which we introduced in the previous video. And whilst continuous random variables generally aren't part of the course, having an understanding of the fact that a continuous probability distribution can be described using a probability density function that is a curve that describes the probabilities um, such that that curve, the total area under that curve is one and that curve always sits on or above the x-axis. And so one example of a probability density function is the probability density function that gives us the bell-shaped curve um, which is what the normal distribution is commonly um, referred to as. So we get this symmetrical bell-shaped curve. The graph that we've got pictured here is what we call the standard normal distribution. And we use this frequently enough that it has its own dedicated um, variable. When we refer to Z, we are often, um, we are usually referring to the standard normal um, variable. Okay, so that is what, by a standard normal distribution, um, that is a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And this is what that graph would look like. In my CAS, I've already got that function defined, the equation for the standard normal distribution, the equation that you would need to type into your CAS to get it to draw this bell-shaped curve um, is this equation here. Okay, so it's a composition of a, a quadratic and an exponential function with some dilation factors happening. <clears throat> so it looks a bit ugly, but it, it's not um, completely horrible. Um, so as I said, Z is what we call um, the random variable of the standard normal distribution. So we would say that Z is a normally distributed variable where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Um, let's confirm that for this particular probability density function because we have looked at um, <coughs> how one might find the mean and the standard deviation for a continuous random variable. And we know that that involves integrals. So um, we know that we find the mean uh, by doing the integral over the total domain of this function of the function which in this case would be from negative infinity to infinity of x times the probability density function and that gives us the mean or expected value and we can confirm um, that with our CAS so if we do that shift plus from negative infinity to positive infinity we are integrating f of z so I've used um, the letter Z in the function because uh, that is um, referring to the standard normal variable. Um, and we want to differentiate that with respect to Z, obviously. Oh, sorry, we, we want to do um, Z times F of Z in the case of uh, this particular function. So here, you know, this is generally speaking how we find the expected value of a um, variable. Um, so if we want the expected value of Z, that is going to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of z times f of z with respect to z. Okay, All right, so we're getting our cas to work that out. And it does indeed confirm that the expected value or the mean is zero. Okay. We can also calculate variance by working out expected value of x squared, take away expected value of x all squared. So in the case of the standard normal variable, that would be sorry, that's not equal, so that would be the variance of z is the expected value of z squared, take away expected value of z all squared. So we've already got this bit calculated, we need to work out expected value of z squared, so we know that we do that using this, so we do z squared times the function, okay? So this would be, this is going to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of z squared times f of z, dz. So if I get my CAS to do that, you've got these CAS screenshots in your notes that confirm these results as well. So expected value of z squared is 1, okay? Um, and so therefore, if expected value of z is 0, expected value of z squared is 1. We put that information into our formula for variance and we find that the variance is 1. And we know standard deviation is the positive square root of variance and so it is also 1. So this um, probability density function is completely consistent with everything we know about um, probability density functions for any continuous random variable. Okay, This is a specific example which gives this bell-shaped curve and we call it the um, normal distribution and when it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one it is the standard normal distribution and this is the equation that defines that curve. 
Okay, so what we want to start to think about is um, very few variables have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So we want to be able to think about, okay, well, how do we transform this PDF if, to a different variable which has a different mean and a different standard deviation? So for example, um, an example of a normally distributed variable that I'm going to refer to commonly just because the numbers are easily accessible in my head is um, IQ scores. So in the population, the uh, mean IQ score is 100 and the standard deviation of IQ score is 15. So how do we instead create a probability density function that describes a, normally distribu a normal distribution where the mean is at 100 and the standard deviation is 15? Okay, so how do we, what's going to be the equation for this? So it is just about transforming this curve. So let's have a little think about that. I'm just going to change over to a graphing program and have a play around with this curve and then we'll come to summarize that on the next page. Okay, so here is my standard normal um, curve. Um, it has got equation here. Um, I haven't used the Greek letters in defining the function, so I've used S in place of standard deviation and I've used M in place of the mean. Um, I've put an image here of the actual equation in the nicely formatted way we would see it written or in a textbook. Um, it's slightly um, less nicely written in the um, graphing programs language, or not language, but it's notations a bit harder to read, um, but it is the same function. And at the moment, we've, I've got it set so that m is 0 and s is 1. So, in fact, I've, I've re sorry, I've revealed too much here by giving away the function straight away. So, what I want, um, let, let's just forget about being able to see that function. Let's just think about what transformations are needed to be able to change the mean and the standard deviation here. So remember, mean is about the center of the distribution. So thinking about how do we move the center, well, that's simply going to be about translation. Okay, so we're going to be able to move the center simply by translating the graph to the left and right. So I'm adjusting the mean here. You can see uh, mean is now, uh, you know, 1.7 there. So the center of the distribution is now happening at 1.7. Okay, so changing the mean is very simple. It's just a simple horizontal translation. Okay, changing the standard deviation. So remember, standard deviation is about spread. Okay, how spread out is the distribution. So what we are thinking about is if we wanted to spread the distribution out more, that is increase the standard deviation, let's have a think about what would happen. So if I do that, I'm just going to increase the value of s here. Okay, we see that the distribution is spreading out. But at the same time, it's not just widening, it's also squashing. Okay, so it's being dilated away from the y-axis but it's also being dilated towards the x-axis at the same time. So there's actually two dilations that are happening to that curve to change the standard deviation. And if I make the standard deviation smaller than one, you see obviously um, the graph gets squashed in towards the y-axis, but at the same time stretched away from the x-axis. And I want you to think about why that would have to be. What, why is that happening? And the answer to that would be, Remember, this, this is a probability density function, and one of the key ideas about a probability density function is that the total area under the curve must be 1. So if I want to adjust the standard deviation and spread the curve out more so that it spans a wider range of values, that's fine, I can do that, but in order to maintain the total area of 1, I also have to squash it down by that same factor. So if I want to, you know, in this case, let's say if I make the standard deviation 2, so the standard deviation has gone from being 1 to being 2, so I've stretched the um, function away from the y-axis by a factor of 2, but in doing that I've also had to squash um, the function down towards the x-axis by a factor of 2, so dilate by a factor of a half from the x-axis. So we have to combine those two things together in order to maintain the fact that it's a probability density function. Okay, let's go back to the notes and we'll come to how we get to this ugly equation that you're seeing up there that's a, a variation. It's essentially applying those transformations that we've just talked about. The other thing to think about is the order of transformations. So if you change the mean first, and it's not going to do this, but if you were to translate to the right and then dilate from the y-axis to change the standard deviation, if your um, mean is not at zero, when you then, so if it's over two, for example, when you then dilate it, the mean's going to also get dilated. So you need to, the order is really important in that you actually need to, in terms of applying the transformations, you need to adjust your standard deviation first before you then translate the graph left or right to change the mean. Okay, so essentially the transformations that need to happen here are that we need to 
um, dilate the graph by a factor of the standard deviation away from the y-axis, dilate the graph by 1 over the standard deviation from the x-axis, that's going to adjust your standard deviation, and then translate the graph left or right depending on where our mean needs to go to. Okay. All right, so let's go back over to the notes and kind of summarise those transformations. Okay, so um, if we ever think about this, so many, as we've said, many variables aren't normally distributed. They don't have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. The curve of the probability density function for a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma may be obtained from the standard normal curve by the following transformations. And we've just had a play with, with that over in the graphing screen. So we know that the first thing we need to do is um, dilate from the y-axis uh, by a factor of sigma. To maintain the area of 1, we also need to then dilate from the x-axis by a factor of 1 over sigma. Okay, And then we're going to translate Oops, sorry, translate to the right by mu. And that would mean that even if mu is negative, if you translate to the right by a negative value, you'll end up going to the left. Okay, so let's sort of think about that, applying that to our function. So obviously, if we apply those transformations to a point, that's what this is saying here. You multiply your x-coordinates by sigma, that's your dilation by a factor of sigma from the y-axis. You divide your y coordinates by one by sigma. That's your dilation from the x-axis by one over sigma, and then you add mu onto your x coordinates. That's your translation to the right by mu. So that's what ha what's happening to every point on the graph. Let's perhaps have a think about what that's actually going to do to the um, to the function. So if we want to get a function of x, now x is a non-standard normal variable. Variable. We're going to take f of z. So f of x is going to be equal to, it's going to be f of z after we have dilated it from the y-axis by a factor of sigma. So dilation from the y-axis means that it'll be z over sigma, f of z over sigma. Okay. Then we want to dilate from the x-axis by 1 on sigma. So that's going to be 1 on sigma times f of z over sigma. Okay. And then we want to translate it to the right by mu. Now careful here how you do that. That's going to be f of z minus mu over sigma. So remember, we're just replacing the z part of the function with z minus mu. We're not subtracting mu from what's already in the function. So thinking about your transformations. So if we were to do that, let me do that over in my case. So let me do, I'll use s and m in place of um, sigma and mu. So if I were to do uh, 1 over standard deviation multiplied by f of uh, control divide z minus the mean over the standard deviation we should find now it's given us a really ugly version of this um, really really ugly actually I thought it might give us exactly what we wanted um, but it's going to give us that that function it's really done a lot to sort of simplify that it's expanded out the squared um, so it wasn't as nice as I thought if we did that by hand let's have a think about it so um, f of Oh, sorry, we know that f of z was 1 over square root of 2 pi um, times e to the, sorry, let me just go back to the top here and get it again, e to the negative half times z squared. And so if we were to apply these transformations, 1 on sigma times f of z minus the mean over sigma is going to be now 1 on sigma times square root of 2 pi e to the negative half and then if we don't bother to expand that we just replace z with z minus mu over sigma all squared that's going to be our equation for the um, normal distribution where the mean is mu and the standard deviation is sigma okay so as we've established if we want to go from the standard normal distribution to a non-standard normal distribution those are the transformations we're going to need to apply so if we think about trying to reverse that so we need to multiply the x values by sigma add mu to the x values, but also divide the y values by sigma, and that's going to keep the area as 1. If we were to reverse that process, okay, so to go backwards, the first thing we would need to do to the x values would be to take away the mean, 
and then divide by sigma. So that's reversing what's happening to the x-coordinates. And similarly, the opposite of dividing the y-coordinates by sigma would be to multiply the y-coordinates by sigma. So if we wanted to go back this way from a non-standard normal to a standard normal, um, that's going to be the way we have to do that. Okay, And that becomes important. We have need to standardise and we'll talk about that. Um, so as I said, as we did by hand up over there, if we were to apply those transformations to the general function, we're going to get our non-standard normal. So we tend to use z in this standard normal variable, but then we would use x in a non-standard normal variable. Okay, so this is the bell curve. It's the equation of the bell curve that has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. So given that, we want to think about, okay, well, if this equation represents a normal random variable x, what is the mean and the standard deviation of x? So the first thing I'm seeing is the mean is probably the most obvious thing to see. The mean is the x minus um, the mean up there. So we can see there that the mean is definitely going to be 4. Okay. Now, the standard deviation is probably easier to see up here. It looks like it's going to be 2. It also should appear here in the formula, and it's perhaps not so obvious in this particular one uh, what's happening there. But if we think about square root of 8, square root of 8 is 2 root 2. So that means this equation is 1 over 2 root 2 pi. And so, in fact, yes, the stand and then the rest of it. So the standard deviation is 2. Now, that um, this formula for the um, this one up here, sorry, this formula for the normal distribution um, with a mean of uh, mu and a standard deviation of sigma, this has been added to the formula sheet in 2020. It's not normally on the formula sheet, and I would usually say, look, you don't really need to worry about it. So I'm not sure whether that indicates that they might be going to ask questions along these lines which they don't normally ask, or whether um, they've just decided in, in removing some of the other information from the formula sheet that that's the best way to, to describe the normal distribution given what you guys know this year. Um, but just to be mindful of the fact that that has now appeared, so um, where I might have considered that actually this section is not so relevant um, given that it draws on your understanding of continuous random variables, the inclusion of this um, does, I think, make it important that you have a bit of understanding about what's happening with continuous random variables and that therefore calculating integrals of this function would allow you to calculate probabilities. Okay, um, so what we want to sort of be able to think about is any non-standard normal distribution can be standardised back to the standard normal. So a couple of things to introduce here, some notation. So you'll remember when, when we talked about the binomial variable, we define a variable as being binomially distributed and we give the n value and the p value because they're the parameters that define the binomial distribution. When it's a normal distribution, it is x is distributed normally, so n is indicating the normal distribution. And then the parameters, now we have to be a bit careful here, the parameters here are the mean comma and then the variance okay so this needs to be the variance here now in most cases in the questions you'll be usually given the standard deviation and so if let's say you've got you've been given a problem with IQ and the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is um, 15 the way I would write that is I'd say IQ is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and I wouldn't bother to write work out what 15 squared is I would just write 15 squared here the standard deviation is 15, but you must make sure that you write the variance in that particular notation. Obviously, if you were to say that x is a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, well, and a variance of 15, you would therefore be implying that the standard deviation is the square root of 15. Okay, so be clear about what you're saying and be careful about that notation. Okay, so if it has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, um, our bell curve is going to be centered around mu. And we'll talk more about these particular statistics in the next video. We should see most of the curve happens within three standard deviations of the mean. So mean plus one standard deviation, mean plus two standard deviations, mean plus three standard deviations. Okay, So most of your curve is only going to be a very small amount of area happening outside of there and outside of there. We'll talk specifically about those statistics in the next video. Mean minus one standard deviation, mean minus two standard deviations, mean minus three standard deviations. Okay. All right, so then if we wanted to standardize, so to convert from this to this, we know that we would need to translate to the left by uh, mu and dilate by a factor of um, 
1 over sigma from the y-axis. So in terms of what would happen to all these x values, if we want this x value to become 0, we're going to take the original x value, take away the mean and divide, about, divide by the standard deviation, which is going to give us 0. Okay. If we want to work out what this value is when we standardise it, we take the original value, we subtract the mean and we divide by the standard deviation and that's going to give us 1. Okay. If we want to work out what this value is, which is there, we take the x, original x value, the non-standard value, we subtract the mean and we divide by the standard deviation and that's going to give us, sorry that's x uh, mu minus 2 theta, that's going to give us negative 2. Okay. And so we can, can standardise a non-standard um, normal distribution using this rule. So all of the, um, um, if any value up here, you know, if this is a, the corresponding value in the standard normal distribution would be a minus the mean divided by sigma. So it's the x value divided by um, minus the mean and divided by sigma will allow you to standardise. And then what that means is if we're essentially saying that this is a, and remember we know that continuous random variables, if we want to work out the probability that x is less than a, we're working out that area there. Okay, or less than or equal to, remember would be the same continuous random variables, doesn't matter. The probability of x equaling a is zero. So whether it's less than a or e less than or equal to a, um, it's going to be the same. What we want to be able to think about is if I were to convert this to a standard normal distribution um, by taking that x value, subtracting the mean and divided by the standard, dividing by the standard deviation, what we would find is that this, now the probability that z is less than or equal to a minus the mean over the standard deviation, that these two things are exactly the same. Okay, And so it, it's a helpful thing to be able to standardise, particularly if we're wanting to compare across different distributions. And we'll have a look at some examples. As I said, we'll talk more about standardisation in the next video. Um, so just to touch on that now, because um, it fits with the transformations of the curve that we talked about. So if x is a continuous random variable that is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, then the probability of x being less than or equal to a is the same as the probability of z, the standard normal, being less than or equal to a minus the mean divided by sigma, where z is the standard, ra standard random variable, sorry, is the random variable of the standard normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is sigma. We'll have a look at some applications of that in the next video. So the sense you want to get from here is about um, the fact that it is a continuous distribution, the, there is a probability density function, there's an equation for that. Um, and then thinking about we get an equation for the standard normal distribution, um, mean of zero, standard deviation of sigma. How do we, so standard deviation of one, how do we then transform that PDF to produce a normal distribution that has a different mean and a different standard deviation? And how do we then reverse those transformations if we want to get from a non-standard normal distribution back to the standardised distribution? Okay. All right, so the work today is exercise 16a. This isn't a big exercise. It's just starting to get a sense of things. Um, you should be able to head straight on to the next video where we talk a bit more about standardisation.